Chinese calligraphy is considered a high art. It's perhaps the perfect hobby then for Professor Barry Marshall. He is, after all, a Nobel laureate. But there was a time when a much younger Barry Marshall did away with the patience and discipline needed for something like calligraphy to embark on a radical experiment that put his own life in danger. I was becoming a bit frustrated and I said, I've, I've got to move on. My career is just disappearing before my eyes. What can I do? In the early 1980s, Barry Marshall was a doctor at a Perth hospital. His colleague, pathologist Robin Warren, had just discovered the gut could be overrun by a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori, often referred to as H. pylori. I was curious because how could bacteria survive in the stomach? It's full of acid. The more the pair investigated, the more they became convinced of a link between Helicobacter and stomach ulcers. It really turned the ulcer business on its head because everyone said, oh yeah, ulcers are caused by stress, then you get too much acid, and a high acid level causes the ulcer. And we were saying, well, everybody's got stress. And we think the bacteria are damaging the lining. And then it, normal people with normal amounts of stress and normal amounts of acid uh, can get ulcers. So that was our theory. A theory that could transform ulcers from a chronic disease to something curable with antibiotics. The tricky part was proving it. Given that Helicobacter only infects humans, animal trials were ineffective. It became clear the Perth duo was very much on their own. The wider medical community just wasn't convinced. So, one Tuesday morning in 1984, an increasingly desperate Barry Marshall drank a broth laced with the bacteria. I thought I'd write a paper about this and then maybe in the future I would develop an ulcer. I could write another paper about that and then I could cure the ulcer with antibiotics and I'd get a third paper out of it. So I had this publication plan which didn't exactly work out because after I drank the bacteria, after about four days, I started to feel quite unwell and I was having vomiting attacks every morning. My wife said I had a bad breath. My mother commented on the same thing. So obviously those people don't keep any secrets from you, especially your mother. Back in the lab, biopsies revealed the helicobacter had caused inflammation in the gut associated not only with ulcers, but also with other gastric diseases such as stomach cancer. Dr Marshall had proven his point. He successfully treated himself with antibiotics, kick-starting a revolution in how stomach ulcers are diagnosed and medicated. The breakthrough saw him jointly win the Nobel Prize for Medicine with Dr Warren in 2005. For a while, Professor Marshall was labelled the guinea pig doctor, but soon enough, he became the stuff of legend. He's really famous because when we study our textbook, every teacher will tell us the stories of how he discovered H. pylori. I think he, he's brave. The mission to eradicate Helicobacter globally is now well underway. Australia's helicobacter rates have more than halved since 1991, while its gastric cancer rates dropped by nearly 50% between 1982 and 2018. The prevalence is very low now, it's about 15 to 20%, uh, and gastric cancer is almost eradicated. Dr Alfred Tay leads the laboratory here at the Marshall Centre for Infectious Diseases Research and Training in Perth. Alongside Professor Marshall, he's playing a key role in tackling the latest challenge with treating helicobacter, antibiotic resistance. People taking antibiotics um, not directly to kill off helicobacter, but for other diseases will ultimately lead to helicobacter become stronger and learn to become uh, resistant to the antibiotic. These multi-drug resistant strains are on the rise in many Asian countries. It was found that in Asia, about half the population was infected with helicobacter, even up to 70% in some places. And all that severe inflammation in the stomach all over your whole life uh, could lead to stomach cancer. It's a situation that Jerry Cho knows well. She works as an internist at the China West Hospital in Chengdu, where she's encountered many patients with gastric cancer caused by undiagnosed helicobacter. If they find H. pylori earlier, 
they may not have gastric cancer. Jerry is one of five scholars taking part in this year's Australia-China Helicobacter Research Fellowship at the Marshall Centre. The four-week program, supported by the National Foundation for Australia-China Relations, has been providing helicobacter training to Chinese doctors and researchers since 2017. We show them how to make the agar, how to put in, uh, culture the bacteria in the incubator, and then uh, we show them how to do the antibiotic resistant testing. With the culture of helicobacter, then we can study the organism. Uh, we can study why it becomes so virulent, why is China strain more likely to cause cancer. One major problem with this cancer is that some people don't have any symptoms, meaning the disease can go unnoticed for years. So early diagnosis is crucial. Dr Tay says working with China has helped accelerate research efforts on this front. China has a lot of gastric cancer. Uh, this is a sad news, but it's also provided us a lot of uh, very precious samples. Uh, we can't do gastric cancer research here because we almost get rid of gastric cancer now. We, we, I and myself haven't seen a gastric cancer case in, in Perth. So we need to know uh, more about these different cancers um, uh, in, in China. We like to do a long-term um, collaborations with these people who trained from us, go back to China, they use our technique uh, to grow this helicobacter and then we can, we can help each other develop new diagnostic tools to actually identify people who are higher risk of gastric cancer, even though they don't have gastric cancer now, they may have gastric cancer in the future. Newer diagnostic tools such as string tests are also leading to more targeted and therefore better treatments for patients with helicobacter. We are able to do DNA testing from the bacteria and find out what antibiotic resistance uh, gene it, it, it carries. Then we can give precision medicine. Away from the lab, the visiting scholars got to spend time with Professor Marshall. Oscar Xu is now in his final year of his undergraduate degree at Zhejiang University and says the conversations left him feeling more confident about his future. I think I, I want to try to move to the business area, trying to product a consumable product that can actually help the patients. This is the first time both Oscar and Jerry have visited Australia. They're already looking forward to their next trip. Oh, it's absolutely lovely experience. Australia have a great beach, uh, especially in West Australia. Australia is a very beautiful country and the people are friendly. I hope I can come here again. I like Australia. They say Australia and China can benefit a lot by working together to beat Helicobacter. Countries who have successfully solved one problem, it is a great thing to share their experience and uh, their solutions with uh, countries that still face with these problems. And that sharing of knowledge starts with programs like this. I'm hoping that uh, one day I'm able to see that China becomes like Australia. No more Helicobacter, no more gastric cancer, and then I can tell my children or my grandchildren, you know, the way, you know, the journey where we get rid of uh, gastric cancer in China, I uh, have contributed to this. It's been rewarding too for the man who began that journey with his now famous self-experiment. People say, was I vindicated? Were we vindicated? Well, clearly we were, uh, but uh, th that wasn't, that's not really the satisfaction you had. The wonderful part is really making a discovery and realising that you know something that no one else knows which could be really important.